and a lot of the other tools that you're used to using in different programs work in here too. Like if you're wondering, well, how would I delete this polygon? Well, you would just click on it and press delete. Now that polygon's gone. Oops. Same thing with the, uh, the points or the edges. We can just undo that. You can just click on a point. If you want to get rid of this point, you can delete it. I'll show you some of the more specialized tools there are in Cinema 4D to do things like this and like actually close the hole for you and things like that. But 3D isn't that much different than programs you used before. You just kind of need to learn the rules. Now one of the things about floating around in space is that there's a couple different modes of navigation that you can use in Cinema 4D. And um, by default, it's using the cursor navigation mode. I know that doesn't mean much to you, but um, let me go show you how to switch it. You can find which one you want to use because I don't like using the default mode. So let's go into edit, preferences, navigation. So yours is going to be like this on cursor mode. So let me switch into that and show you how that works. So with cursor mode, wherever we click in the viewport, it will make that the center. It will make that the axis that the camera spins around, right? So what I like doing, I like having the object that's selected be the thing that I'm spinning around. Even if it's over here, I still want to spin around that object. So the mode that I like using that I recommend you trying out is the object mode. So now even if this object is over here, as long as it's selected, we're going to spin around that object. So this is just how I like working. And you can go into some of the other modes and try them. It doesn't hurt anything. So try these different modes and just out of the box, see which one makes the most sense to you. I'll show you a specialized one, which is the camera mode, which you'll really only use for animating cameras or looking through a camera. Because now this one rotates at the base of the camera. So this is if you had a real world movie camera and you were panning it left and right. So that's how this one works. It's not very handy for actually moving around your scene to look at stuff, but it's pretty good if you want to simulate camera moves or just see how it would look if a camera is moving through your scene. So check out the different modes, but I really like the object mode. So whichever one works best for you, go with that one because you're going to do, be, be doing a lot of this flying around and you want to make sure that it makes sense to you and it feels natural. So right now what I would recommend doing is that, let's go ahead and delete this cube. Just create another cube, move around in space, move the cube around, press C to make it editable. Go into the polygon mode or the point mode and just start pulling things around and just practice doing this stuff so that it makes sense to you, so that you understand where you are in 3D space, what this stuff is doing, where it's going. And uh, while you're doing that, I'll just show you a couple other little simple things. Let's go ahead and rename this cube parent. And let's go ahead and make another cube, move it out here and let's make that one editable and let's call it child. Now the object manager is very logical. So let's say we wanted this one to be the parent. So when we move this around, we have this object inside of it. Well, there's really no easier way to do it the way the object manager does it. You just select the object and put it inside the other one. Now when we move this parent around, we do anything to it, it's gonna do that to both of them. So that's how you parent and child things here in the object manager. It works just like you would think it would work. And if you don't want to see it, you can just close it. So anything you see here that has a plus means that it has something that's a child of it. And if you want to take it out, you can just take it out. You can reverse them. You can do whatever you want. You can put a hundred of them in here. That's how parenting works inside of Cinema 4D in a very basic way. And something else you might be wondering about, maybe you accidentally clicked it here, is that we have these two little dots. And these are called the stoplights in Cinema 4D. So here we have this parent object, and I want to show you where it's tied into, into the attributes editor. So these two little dots connect to these things here, visible in editor, visible in renderer. The top one is visible in editor, the bottom one is visible in renderer. And we're not really going to go into rendering just yet, but I just wanted to show you what these things do. You might see them in other tutorials or examples. Right now they're set to default. So that just means nothing. By default they're on. 
if we click the dot it turns green which switches this to on and if we click it again it turns to red which switches it to off so you can't see it so if we click the bottom one we can do the same thing now why is there two why could I have this one set to green this one set to red so the editor dot the top one is responsible for what's visible here in our editor in our viewport the renderer dot is responsible for what we see when the image is rendered so just to test that out let's make it green for visible and editor and red for visible and renderer and this button up here or control plus R is to render it so we see it now in the viewport let's click render now it's invisible because it's set to be off in the renderer so now you understand how to do that and as a shortcut if you want to do them both at the same time you hold the alt key and then you click them and it does both so you might be wondering why would you want a default and a green state so I'll show you with parenting and, and having a child object so let's say this parent we want turned off but this child we want turned on so even if we click the render button it's not visible anywhere so but if we turn it to green now we can see the child and not the parent so that's just the way you can control the visibility of objects by using these things called the stoplights